here we go, you know, the big money, the big, big money, this is your money for the reggae boys. Yeah, man, people, bless up on yourself. You don't know Nick Adam Eno's there again. You know, um, this video will be, you know, 2023 as an um, assessment, you know, what took place from early up in the month or early up in the year until now. And the reggae boys, you know, this will solely be about the reggae boys. You know, I will do a reggae girls one, you know, um, a couple of days from now that will drop. So, you know, I can't package up everything in one. It won't, it, it will be such a long video. And, I don't really got much time to be doing live, so yeah, I just, you know, shoot, you know, this, it, when I shoot this video, you know, it took me like three to four days before I edit it and, you know, put it out, but, you know, yeah, um, I did this video for a while now before initially, you know, it dropped on the channel, but, you know, people bless up on yourself, man, you don't know, you know, thanks for all the support and everything, you know, the reggae boys, man, I've played so many games, you know, over, 2023 calendar you know um so much ups and downs you know so much joyful time that you know i had you know some painful last and especially that one against mexico you know some whole heap of thing happened you know but i'm going to share you know my opinion and the takeaway for the reggae boys in 2023 you know so and you know click that subscription bell and like up the video if you're new, you know, you haven't subscribed as yet, you know, so just do so and share it and comment. Tell me what you guys think. What was, you know, your biggest moment for the Reggae Boys in 2023 and what was your, your biggest low moment, you know, for the Reggae Boy in 2023? So comment in the comment section and please let me know what you guys think, you know, but I'm going to go ahead, you know, and kick start things, you know, um, so... The reggae boys, you know, played all of the competitive games, you know, Nation League, you know, um, we played two sets of Nation League, you know, one that carry over from 2022 into 2023, and, you know, we played that Gold Cup, you know, we played the Nation League in the back end of the, of the year, and we played some friendlies, you know, we played Trinidad in two sets of friendlies, you know, we played Guatemala in an unofficial, so we played three unofficial friendlies, and we had those um, friendlies in Austria against Jordan and Qatar. You know, we haven't won any of those friendly games. You know, all those, what, five friendly games we haven't won. We lost three of those and drew two. You know, so yeah, I'm going to start things off with those two friendly games that played in Kingston and Montego Bay in March. You know, that friendly game, you know, was the first... Not official, but it's the first game, you know, for the Icelandic coach. You know, he got appointed last year, September, and you know, he played. We played Cameroon, I think, in November. We played a, a away game in Cameroon. I think that was their game. You know, um, bef just before the FIFA World Cup, you know, we got one nil. But we the 2023 was Trinidad in Montego Bay, where we lost. Um, in we lost one nil. You know, we lost one nil in that game. Horrible pitch, you know, horrible pitch. You know, um one of the biggest takeaway, you know, about that game, you know, young seventeen year old Dujan Whisper Richards, you know, got his run out in that game, you know, and it was lovely, you know, for Dujan to get his first taste of international football, you know, he said that was yeah, it was his biggest dream, you know, his dream finally um come true, you know, to, to to wear the black, green and gold at the Cena level, you know, and we lost that game. Horrible pitch, horrible pitch in that yard. You know, um, the coach complained about it. You know, um we went to Kingston a few days later and we drew that game zero zero and I would say it would have better game and a better pitch, you know, but we could have done more. You know, we could have done more in that game where we could beat that Trinidad team. But you know, they walk away from Kings, they walk away from Jamaica, you know, winning the game and drew that. So yeah, positive for the Trinidad team, you know. But we're going to move on. Nations League coming up in Mexico, you know, coming up in the Azteca. You know, it's we haven't we haven't got a result in the Azteca since Wapikil Philo. But we managed to go in this game in Mexico. Coach Aimee Algrin's first competitive game, yeah. In this game, we needed a win to 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 go ahead 
um, over Mexico, you know, it would be much easier for us to finish and for group leaders and so we could play, you know, the Nations League semi-final. But, you know, the game drew 2-2. But the biggest the biggest takeaway from that game was that Bobby Leach tried wonderful in the eight minute, yeah? Wonderful. And it was pouring rain in the Azteca. I feel like it was like hail was falling at one point, you know? But it was, it was a really good, you know, it was a really good performance. But at that time, when Jonathan Russell played, that game, people was like, "Whoa, do we get a final? We get, we, we got a number six. You know, people was buzzing about Jonathan Russell's performance. You know, Bobby Reed, excellent, excellent on the day. You know, um, Ethan Pinock, he was excellent on the day also. Um, the second goal scored by Alvarez, it was our own goal, and that game." You know, they would have killed us on that right side. You know, or Orbelin Pineda, you know, he got one of the goal, And the Mexican, they would run us to the ground in the midfield. You know, they would run us to the ground in the midfield and just swapping that ball back out on both left side. But it was it was a really good game. You know, it was um it was a really good showdown, you know, in Azteca. But mind you, you know, in that game, I'm I'm yeah, green, so it was I think it was his third game. Was it? Is it? Is it third? I think it was his fourth game. You know, he having win a game coming into that, into that Mexico game. You know, people was talking about. You know, everyone was talking about. You know, what he's supposed to be doing and all of that. But he got that result, and everyone was just over the moon. Everyone was buzzing like it was a wonderful. You know, you could see that four four two. Everyone like, is this the Icelandic system? He's he's bringing over into the Jamaican flavor, but. You know, going to move on, you know, from that game. You know, April the 15th should be another game that was like an unofficial game, but it was postponed versus Guatemala. That game should have played in New York. That game got postponed. You know, moving on. Yeah, so um, so right after, you know, that Mexico game, you, has, you know, you're supposed to play the, the Guatemala game, postponed. But, you know, a month later, the JFF, they pull off something that no one was expected. You know, they got two friendlies on the card, one versus Qatar and one versus Jordan, you know, in Austria. You know, the coach he was talking to, he was very optimistic about the team, you know, players coming in, fighting for their spot, you know, um, taking these two games well as important just as like a training session. You know, at the time, you know, he's probably trying to figure out his players, you know, his best selection. And, you know, at, the, at one point I was saying, yeah, yeah, this is too valuable a game that, you know, coach Almir Grinso is going to get to know his players. And those games, I think, scheduled for like a couple of weeks before, a couple of weeks after, you know, the the English Premier League. And, you know, we have a, couple, we have a few players in the English Premier League in the championship. So, you know, the, the, the English game going to end around near... The twenty something like that. I think the last game in England played on ni- May nineteen or something like that. Yes, but most of the players bailed out on us. Yeah, most of the players, and I was very frustrated, and I was living it because when you really look at the squad that we had back then, it would be so wonderful for everyone to come and join up in Austria. You know, getting that keen chemistry, getting that band together, getting everything together, especially with a new coach. You know, new players supposed to come in. And, you know, I was expecting players should, you know, cut their holiday short, you know, sacrifice everything for their country. And the matches, you know, the first game, you know, June 15, you know, we lost against Qatar 2-1. And the other game we lost against Jordan 2-1. We lost both games. So going into the Gold Cup right after the coach is, uh, I think, seven games without a win going into the World Cup and we're going to face the host nation you know we're going to face the host nation but right after that game they picked the the 23 man squad for the World Cup and one of the biggest surprises of that was the Mary Gray in the squad to John Whisper Richard 17 year old in that squad also in the Gold Cup squad yeah and Everyone was living it. Everyone was living it for the young 17-year-old. Everyone was living it, you know, to see the Mary Gray in the squad, you know, the time at Everton, fresh off the block, you know. Wasn't playing his best football, 
but you know his quality was there you know he, he you know this player could have done something for the reggae boys in the CONCACAF region you know and as i said it's seven game winless streak um in the in those seven games one clean sheet we scored five goals you know we can't see around 11 goals at the time going back into that argentina game until the until right up to the game to face USA, the host nation of the World Cup, and we was like, where the, the, the win going to come from? You know, coming up against the USA, even though they picked a C team, yeah, right after the US played those those couple of um, games, the semi and the final in the Nations League, they rest and put away all their the, the best quality players, I think. I think one of the players that, you know, um, was in that squad, who would really start? Um, it was Matt Turner. You know, I think he was the only one that really that would be in that original starting level for the US men's national team, you know, got in that squad. Um, yeah, Matt Turner, I think, you know, a few players in it, but I would say starting players. Some people are saying B team, C team for the US, you know, all bunch of things, you know. Um, we had a couple of players that come in for the first time playing there. Coming in for into our first tournament, let me see, Carl Bernard, Pino, you know, a whole bunch of players, Amari Bell, you know, coming in, the whole, the whole internet, everyone, you know, was buzzing about the reggae boys, have what, seven English English Premier League players going into the squad, you know, Amari Bell just got promoted with Luton Town, Whisper got a pre-contract with Chelsea, you know, Will join up with the, should join up with the team at the time with, at the age of eighteen, so you know it was a whole bunch. I think everyone was talking about you know the reggae boys how far they can go. You know fans were very optimistic about playing in the Gold Cup that that summer, and everyone was buzzing because it was like, can we get the first three points? You know, in the group stage over a very weak opponent. You know who picked their B slash C team, and. You know, it, the first game though, um, but before the first game, another thing, Mikel Antonio, you know, was coming off that big, big season with, with West Ham winning that Europa Conference League, winning the Europa Conference League, you know, so Mikel Antonio as a big top striker was coming in. Shaman, of course, was it on his best form coming into this game as he was having a bismal at, um, at Sparta, Moscow in Russia. But the first game, USA versus Jamaica. Guess what? We drew the first blood. Yeah, we sliced them first. Damian Lowe, Edda from Adamari Gray, free kick. Set the tone at the game. I mean, we start, we played that game really good. But the midfield, let, the midfield let us down. Yeah, the midfield let us down in that game. And it was like, mm-mm. I wasn't liking this. It wasn't you know it wasn't feeling it and then we 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 got a penalty. We got a penalty in the game. Leon Bailey missed it. Wonderful save, you know, um by Matt Turner. Wonderful save. I think he dived to his left hand side. You know, and I don't know how we didn't, you know, got that three points and everyone was leaving it in the comment section in a few comments, you know, post up about, you know, Jawel Latibody here in in the reggae boys team, you know, keep picking him. Um, Leon Bale missed penalty. You know, people were saying they're disappointed with the result. Should have won the game. You know, everyone was kind of it was a mixed bag. An emotional thing was going on. You know, with the reggae boys fans all over. But nevertheless, I coach Almi Vincent still on a winless run. Yeah, still haven't won in eight games right after that. That US game, we played eight, he, play, he, play, he coached eight games under his belt for the Reggae Boys and he haven't won a game. Second game, going to that big, big rival, Soka versus Reggae. Yeah, Soka versus Reggae, Trinidad versus Jamaica. Remember, a couple of months ago, Trinidad beat us in an unofficial game and then drew with us. So they have all rights for coming into this, this game on a high. <laughs> you know, but the eventually, you know, we won that game and we settled everything 4-1. You know, we beat them. You know, a lot of chit-chat were going around, you know, um, is the reggae boys back? You know, um, Leon Bailey performance, you know, Demari Gray grabbed a brace in the game. It, it, it was everything. And then Dujan Whisper Richards, 
the youngest player to ever scored in a World Cup game. He done it at 17 years old. He came on and he scored in the 90, 94 minute. It was a, it, I think it was a, it was a long distance shot that got deflected. Yeah, and he done it. You know, but finally, Coach Almir Green won a game for the reggae boys, and that was against Trinidad, the team that he faced the first opening two games of 2023. He came back and beat them in the World Cup. But remember, it should have been Nicaragua. Nicaragua in the group stage, but because they feel some ineligible player, you know, they got kicked out and they brought in Trinidad. That's how we play them. We beat them. You know, but moving on, you know, going to St. Kitts, everyone was like, yes, we finally won a game under the new coach, you know, and we dump up St. Kitts, you know, I mean, he, he brought in some players, you know, a little rotation, you know, Paris, um, I think Mariapa played, I think um, he brought on a keeper that play for Reading, um, Boys Price, something like Boys Price, something like that. Yeah, and everyone was like, yeah, we can send kids 5-0. You know, we got some unusual score and on, on the score sheet, I think, Berg score. Everyone was barking down at um, Nicholson, you know, having a poor game again. You know, the comment section was buzzing. You know, everyone was living it. You know, Shama Nichols, Shama Nichols was out of touch in the goal cup. He was out of touch. You know, everyone was like, Mikel Antonio is working hard for the team. But, you know, when he's going to get that first goal, you know, so the whole group stage and everything wrapped up now, knowing that, you know, even Bernard as a defender got his first goal for the reggae boys. Yeah. So everything wrapped up and going into the knockout round. Who are we going to face? Guatemala. Yeah. Well supported team. Guatemala is a team that going into the knockout round and beaten. Drew with Canada. Yeah? They got seven points. Top their group. So we it's not some team that was the script to their group. We playing a team that won their group. We should have been Canada, you know, if prediction goes correctly. But Canada again pick probably a B team. A little bit of the A players, but mostly of, mostly of bench players, fringe players. Guatemala managed to tap that zone and beat in the group stage. I think they drew 0 0 Trinidad now with, with Canada. One game they win 3 2 and an next one they win 2 0. So I think they only can see um, two, two goals coming into the game and it's going to play in Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati. And you know, um, Reggae Boys also did unbeaten, but you know, we drew. With the US and then you know both of us finish on seven points, but they you know they finish above with goal difference and all of that, you know. But going to that game at Cincinnati against um Guatemala, we did it and we beat them 1-0 courtesy of Amari Bell. I think that goal scored in that something like 50 something minute in the game, you know, early in the second half, as the Guatemalan they were knocking the ball all around. I was very shocked. To what the Guatemala was, um, the players were doing to us. Yeah, I was, a, I was a little bit worried. It's like, where the goals, you know, going to come from? You know, but winning that game, everyone was like, can this be our year that we're going to lift the goal cup? Yeah, you know, our players, I would say, you know, the midfield let us down in that game. You know, Joe Latibody again. The f the fans were having a Go at him, you know, in that tournament, yeah. The fans are going at, you know, Boza, you know, Joel, um, I think Damian Law, you know, the fans are going at them, you know, as they didn't have their best of best, you know, um, tournament. But, you know, when we finally got that result, everyone was going, you know, in and out, in and out in the comment section, you know, after JFF beers, you know, the comments were just flying in. Everyone was happy, you know, everyone was, was like, yes. Can we get revenge back on Mexico? You know, they knocked us out in the nation league in March. You know, can can we get, you know, um a better result against them and go on and play in the final, you know, but Mexico, you know, go on to get Mexico. I don't know what the MLO did in that game man, but the Mexican they wipe us out first the, the first two goals came at, at such a quick time. It just knocked us out. We never recover. We never recovered from that 
from those two early goals with the Mexican. We never recovered. You know, Chavez, Romo, these players were just having a field day in the midfield. You know, um, Antuna, he was having a laugh at us. He was having a joke with our wing back. You know, Orwell and Pineda, they were just living it. You know, the both Mexican wing backs, Jesus Callado and Jorge Sanchez, they were just running up and down. You know, they would, they, they pin like four players in the midfield. Meanwhile, we had only two central midfielder, and Bailey, Bailey wasn't tracking back. They would have killed us on our right side, as what they usually do. They usually just pin players on the right side and just overload it. And that's where most of the goals came from. I don't know what, you know, uh, man of, um, head of state was doing in that game. Yeah? You know, but 3-0, that's the end of the World Cup. Everyone was having a cracker. You know, the players, especially, you know, head of state, everyone was having their say. You know, everyone, you know, would say that they knew it would have, we knew it would have lose and all of that, but I think I didn't that that was that was really hard to be honest to see how the, the coach managed this even the substitution in that game. You know, it, it took way too long to get players off the pitch and players on. You know, it took way too long. You know, um Mikel Antonio haven't scored a goal, but you know, he outside of that he press, you know, he counter pressed the, the defenders, you know, especially in the in the group stage in the, in the Trini game and the Saint Kitts game, yeah, he caused a lot of problems where you know teams turn over and we scored. You know, he do a lot of after ball movements, you know, for us, but he didn't score. We need goals from him. If we'd probably like, get a couple goals from him, especially in this game, it'd probably be more easier. You know, we didn't play a collective, you know, um, team game. Was it a team game? Not one bit. It was all individual. You know, the man him just pinned two, three players. Players and the Marigree. He couldn't do nothing, but he had a wonderful goal cup. And, you know, kudos for him. He had a wonderful goal cup. But, you know, such is life. We out of the goal cup. Goal cup is over. You know, the dream of winning the first ever goal cup is just shattered right in front of our face. Just like that. And then here we go again. Back to the CONCACAF Nations League. Where we're going to play Honduras. 80 twice. And Grenada. Our first game, Honduras. We struggled to beat them. Wonderful um, dribble by Damari Gray. He gave us that only goal in the game. Now we scraped our line to beat an Honduran team who came, I think, third or our third. I think they came last in their zone. Their first game in the Gold Cup, Mexico smashed them four. So everyone was like, yeah. You know, um, I think they had a new coach, you know, Rui Dia. You know, uh, I think he's a he's a um Colombian. New coach, you know, new philosophy, you know, um it's like a starting over for the Andorran, you know, um players coming in, players coming going out. Everyone was like, Can we finally get this again? Get the team running again. And we beat them, but we struggle. The second game, 80 at home again. Damian Lowe too bismal miss. He made some wonder he made some wonderful plays and he makes some horrible decisions. Good player, but he made some horrible decisions in 2023. You know, drew that game 2-2 at home. We we were we were 2 0 down. We lucky to get back ourselves in the game. I think Bobby Rich scored a penalty in that game to brought us back in in the game. Next, um, the, the Asian, they had a player named St. Aloysius, uh, St. Aloysius, something like that. He just have a laughter of us. Again, down the right side. And I was like, what the hell was going on, man? Is this real? The Asians leading two up in, at the office. I was like, whoa, but we finally, you know, got two goals in the back of the net and you know, we got a point, it was a positive, but it was a horrible performance in the first half. Even you have to big up Blake. He made some beautiful stops. 1v1. The Asian got two 1v1. One player should have scored at least four goals in that game. <laughs> you know, but the next game, we went away the other month. Um, I think that's November. No, October. 
We played Grenada and we played Haiti in October. And we you know we beat Grenada 4 1 and we beat Haiti again. We scrape again. You know, um, big up to the Asian striker Piro, he scored a brace. We almost lose the game again. But, you know, we finish, we finish, you know, um, with 3, 6, 9, with 10 points. And we tap it. And then we go on to know that we're going to play Canada in the, in in that in that quarterfinal of the Nations League. And here we go. The big month. The big, big month. Decision month for the reggae boys. This November, which was last month, which was my birthday month. And we had one game before we go into that Canada game. And that game is against Guatemala. Again. That's when I start to make some preparation. Like, yeah, I'm going to see our three games in this month. The Guatemala, the one in Kingston and the one in Canada. That was my best, best time supporting the reggae boys. It was November last month was a big decision month for the reggae boys. A lot of things could have gone around. But we managed to pull through. But it all started from that Guatemala game. A lot of positive came up with that young squad. Everyone was like, you know, should this team be the, the, the should it should the coach build on this on this team should be our B team where we can take and pull out players rotating into the into the first team. I was like, you know, can we do what the US do? Can we do what the, 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 the Canadian do? The Mexican do? Have an A team and a B team well structured. And, you know, the, 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 the youngsters, they played really well. And it was a cold night in Harrison, New Jersey. Pick up to um, Speedy Williams and Ramon all day. They hold down the middle, you know, um, Damara Phillips. And 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 Beckford, Deshaun Beckford, they played really well. You know, um, Romaro Williams played really well. You know, um, Tope and King at the back, they played really well. And they and that just set the tone. Tyreek Maggie wasn't having um he didn't have his best game, but you know, we could see a flash of brilliance of him, what he can do. And a couple of players, you know, actually made that squad to play Canada. But that was where the tone said to go in that Canada game. Boom. The game done in Harrison. The Friday come. We're supposed to play Canada in Kingston. Rain, 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 rain. Non-stop rain. Me and myself got stuck in the airport trying to get to Kingston. Stuck in the airport for like, I think, 12 or 15 hours trying to get down to Kingston from Florida. It was just a horrible scene in the airport, you know, even when you get to Kingston. Boom, the man in the game, before the man in the game postponed, but the field was in, it, it, it was a river, the field was like a lake, to be honest, yeah? The field was like a lake, and I got to, I, I, I finally got in Jamaica around, uh, I got to, I think I got in Jamaica, I think 3 p.m. at the time or 2 p.m. My flight landed in Jamaica on Friday, the game day. And I was like, I don't know if this game I'm going to play. I even drove all the way, you know, from my house to the stadium just to see if the game I'm going to play. I knew it was going to play, but, you know, I'm very optimistic. Like, I'm not going to just travel to Kingston and just stay at home, but... Finally, you know, they postponed the game. They said 10 o'clock tomorrow, free game. Boom, reaching the Nationals at the National Stadium. When I got there, you know, with my two younger ones, you know, my friend and, you know, whole family, it was chaos at the gate. It was chaos at the gate. It was chaos at the gate. They were saying that, you know, fans who already bought tickets for the game, have first privilege to go in and the fans weren't having that got the game about to start. I got there like five, ten minutes before the game, before the game kick off and you know it took me like twenty minutes before I could before I could get in. I, I have to give strangers, you know, my, and my friend, my kids 
to pull them through the railway because they only had one railway open at the time and I was like, what the hell is this, man? You know, it, it was a wonderful experience, man, but, you know, um, finally get, get into the game, kick, kick off, I think, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. at the Saturday morning and it was a, it was a nice good crowd in, in, in Grandstand, you know, fully packed Grandstand, to be honest, fully packed Grandstand and we lost the game 2-1. Yeah, we lost the game too, and the fans were having a go at Daniel Johnson. The fans were having a um, go at Trivante Stewart. He got double sub. Nikel Antonio got injured, still recovering from that knee injury. You know, um, fans were fans weren't having it. You know, it was a poor game. It was a really poor game, to be honest. Poor, poor game from us in Hudson. You know, I think. We, we should have worked the Canadian more because in the first 30 minutes of the game, they tired. You know, they tired. I, don't, I, don't, I couldn't imagine, you know, um, the Canadian were feeling at the time. But Leon Bailey missed a sitter, sitters. You know, he missed so many opportunities in the game. Could have easily scored a trick, man. I don't know if Leon Bailey got buy out in that game. You know, but game over, 2-1. Everyone walking the National Stadium very disappointed. You know, um, head down, you know, I was like, hmm, is there's a way, you know, with that going into, going at BMO Field, you know, in Toronto, in that call, is there's a way for us to win, especially the Canada have last game, I think they had like 15 wins and seven, 15 wins and seven draws, no defeat. They haven't last year since 2010. And I think, the last time, I think that they, the last time they lose a game in Canada, I think it was, I think it was Peru. Or, no, I think it was a Mexican beat them in a World Cup qualifier. I think it was, in, I think that was like eight years ago, you know, and they have lost a game at BMO Field since 2010. And, you know, the last game that they lost, it was in Vancouver against the Mexican. But finally, you know, land overnight, you know, in Canada and all of that and, you know, hearing some news about the squad, you know, what players were doing, and you know, that I was like, looking outside at the weather, it was getting foggy and foggy and foggy, I and mean, it was just getting worse, so the weather was just getting worse, the rain was coming down from overnight, the weather started from overnight really bad, you know, and it was like, whoa, what's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen tomorrow night in the cold? Boom. Final day come November the 21st. Didn't know it was going to be my best time of my life watching a game in 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 um in our stadium supporting the boys. Never knew it was going to be my best time of my life. Yeah, and everything was just chaos about that game, man. I thought I'd seen enough in Kingston, but oh my god, when I get downtown into when I get downtown, man. Me and Kevin get downtown Toronto. It was some horrific scene. Traffic. It's a good thing we come from Jamaica where we just I run the one way. <laughs> and I beat the traffic. So come we could have get at least we, we got we got inside in the car park around five minutes in the game, you know, and just to see the lines to get in the stadium, they had one gate in each section just to let the people in and I think I seen it enough in Kingston and it was like I look at Kevin I'm like when are we going to get in in the 88 minute and we start to just skip you know we start to do we start to, we just start to just skip 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 until we reach in the, in, in the front we finally got in but before we got in we heard the Canadian was shouting 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 didn't know that Blakey were putting some wonderful performance in. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we we won the game. You know, we won the game. Won the game and we won an hour of goals, you know, but that Bobby Reed penalty. That Bobby Reed penalty, man, I shut my eyes. Oh, I knew that goal scored. I I heard I could hear I could only heard you know a few people screaming. Even though it was a lot of Jamaicans in the stadium, but 
to Canada, and, you know, it was a lot. I think it was like 18,000 in the stadium, and it probably was like 5,000 that first in the stadium scattered all over the place, you know. But that was a well deserved game, you know. Um, Damien Lowe played this game of his life, you know, he played the game of his life, man. You know, big up to Blakey, you know, um, Boza, the Boza, man, he came back from all those critics, you know, I knew he's a good striker, I knew it was just a moment of time before he started to get the goals in and it all uh, started to that move, you know, to from Russia to France to play for Claremont foot. And, you know, from there you could see his farm start to get in better and better and he leave the best for last and, you know, we qualified for the Copa America. We qualified for the Copa America, man. We qualified for the Copa America, beating Canada and away goals in their own backyard. 3-2. Cha-cha. You know, but... I don't know, man. 3-2, winning that game. 3-2, man. Wonderful game, man. Wonderful game, winning that game. 3-2, you know, in our backyard. Wonderful game. You know, but I was having it. I was living it, you know, in the stand after after the final whistle, man. I was living it with the Canadian fans, man. I was taking off my coat. I wish I, I wish someone, you know, was was videoing me at the time, man. That's my coat of everything, and I was making a mockery of them, knowing that the reggae boys did it, yeah, and we did it, you know. So, but that that was my. That was, you know, my best experience traveling, you know, up to Canada to see that game. I thought going to Kingston would have been the, one of the best. It's just just by traveling, you know, with first time going to a reggae boys game. I think it was the first time going to a reggae boys game with. I think going to the first time going to a reggae boys game, you know, with my kids. That was that was a moment for me right there, you know, because my dad did it, and you know, I did it with, with with my two my two kids, you know, but. That Canada game, man, it took everything out of me, man. It took everything out of me, you know. And just to see the NC, you know, going, going to the team hotel, you know, seeing all the players, you know, seeing back some old fears, you know, I haven't seen for a while, you know. It's good to see them, you know. And the moment for me at the moment for me at the team hotel was, you know, in my. Reggae boy court, you know, my Romy, long time court, and the president stopped me and like, are you a big, big supporter of the reggae boys, man, to be wearing this coat? It's a long time. I was like, yeah, president's a long time. You know, and from there, we just started chit-chat. You know, I was expressing my feeling, everything. You know, I was congrats, you know, everything was just positive, you know, and from there, the rest is history, man. The rest is history. You know, but yeah, that was my take on the Reggae Boys 2023. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, Nicole the Media was just present 2023 review of the Reggae Boys. You know, a couple of days from now will be the Reggae Girls. You know, big, big work up in that moment for them. You know, also a lot of ups and downs too. But, you know, thanks for watching, people. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. You know, bless up. Salute. In the city life, I'm feeling so alive Drifting around the corner, got them shades on my eyes It's a pretty little thing by my side That's flawless, why you niggas still chasing roaches?